But first, forget about science fiction. These mutant toads are the real deal. They're big. They're warty. They're highly toxic. And if you thought this menace couldn't get any creepier, think again. They have mutated. That's right, we're talking about mutant toads. We are very serious here. Some have been found with extra toes and longer limbs or all kinds of strange things, Scott. Can you tell me more? Yes, indeed. We have been finding all manner of weird things mm -hmm. in our local toad population. Mm -hmm. um, as you said, we're getting ones with extra limbs and extra toes, but yep. sometimes they're missing limbs or missing toads, um, missing eyes or bent backs and things like that. So a whole gamut of different types of abnormalities. Now, can I have a look at one of these guys? Sure. So here's a toad, and it basically has two extra little digits here. Yep. So normally there's four digits on the, the, the forelimb of these types of animals. Mm -hmm. um, this one has five. These are the types of abnormalities we're finding in the toads, mm -hmm. um, and we're finding them in um, higher numbers than what are expected in a normal population. Unlike some mutants that I've seen in the movies recently, they've got superpowers mm. which are quite beneficial. These mutations aren't so helpful. No, they're not. No, so they, they don't have superpowers per se. They mm. um, really are hindrance to their survival. The severe ones don't survive through to um, you know, adulthood. And they're not going to evolve, so we're not going to have mutant toads mm -hmm. you know, <laughs> taking over the planet, so to speak. OK. As long as they don't get hands. That's, that's the most important thing, right? Yeah, or, or like, or they could start flying, maybe. Yeah, that would be a problem. That would be. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> OK, back to uh, reality. Uh, Dr Scott's research means that these mutant pests might actually be some help to us. They have very porous skin, so, you know, like, like a frog, they absorb chemicals and contaminants out of the environment. So are the abnormalities showing there's some changes in the water that we should be concerned about for not mm -hmm. just toads, but for frogs, for fish and, and humans, potentially? Sure. Well, it sounds like very important research. And of course, another big part of this is you've got to catch these toads. Correct. And that's what we have to do. That's right. So let's go. All right. <laughs> sounds like a job for toad busters. But seriously, that's what this group of local volunteers call themselves. And they're pretty successful. Sometimes they catch up to 600 toads in one night. Oh, he's a good one. He's a wet one too. Oh, yeah. So you hold them out from your body so they don't pee on you and you throw them in the bag. Looks like you did urinate on me. There you go. You initiated. <laughs> So put it at you guys. Jeez, I'm not very good at this, am I? There we go. <laughs> <laughs> there you go, you got him. All right. Hmm, not my finest moment. Maybe that's why I didn't make the cricket team. So what we're finding, because it's towards the end of the season, mm. we're not getting as many toads as we normally would at the yeah. start of the season. So it's really showing that the, the, the buster program, the toad buster program, is is being um, is is quite useful in removing the toads from the local area. Yeah. And so the frogs in, in the in the local water here will benefit, yeah. Most definitely. So it gives them an opportunity to breed and, and reproduce, and, and so they can um, you know repopulate the area when once the toads are gone. Tonight, it looks like the toads have been defeated. But this epic battle between mankind and mutant toads is far from over.